Hello, I'm Jacqueline. I'm Mark. Today we'll be tasting, sharing, introducing Regal Rogue Vermouth. So Mark, what is vermouth? Vermouth is aromatized wine. So all vermouth must be 75% wine mm -hmm. and it must contain wormwood. What is wormwood? Wormwood is a part of the daisy family. Right. So there's 400 different strains of the daisy family. We use one part that is not the hallucinogenic part that's used in absinthe. That is not hallucinogenic. Not hallucinogenic. Ah, but 400, that's a lot. Yeah. And Regal Road uses native Australian herbs with things like wormwood. Native Australian herbs. That's yeah. really cool. So what is the origin of vermouth? The traditional vermouth category was led by France and Italy. Yeah. So you had Norley Pra, Martini, Cinzano, Antica Formula, and coming into the 50s, 60s, and 70s, people were drinking it with like Cinzano and lemonade in the yes, 70s, yes, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, you come into the 1970s and 1980s, and you started to get the cocktail movement. And then in the 1990s, it became vodka, so martinis. Yes. So vermouth went from Cinzano lemonade to Cinzano being washed with a over ice for a martini. Yeah. Or Norley Pra being the dry. Yeah. And then you went into the 20s or 2000s um, and kind of around 2011 when we launched, there was a, a movement changing the traditional vermouth understanding of Italian and French. Okay. Um, when we launched in, in the market in Australia, we were the first Australian brand in 20 years. You were the first yeah. in 20 years, wow. And now there are 14 Australian brands in, in Australia alone. Um, on top of New Zealand and America, as I mentioned before. Yeah. So the category is changing very, very quickly. The word vermouth, um, the German word for wormwood is vermut. Vermut. V-E-R-M-U-T. Uh, and then the French made it a lot more romantic by making it into vermouth. Vermouth. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you, you do it really do well. It. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and that's really where it all started. So it started by taking r the ends of wines. Right and putting all these herbs and spices and wormwood is one of the key ones. Um, and over time, brands like Regal Rogue have made it a lot more contemporary with more interesting wines and, and new, new world wines like Australian wines with Australian herbs and spices. And now in the modern vermouth movement in America, Greece, Spain, UK, Italy, everywhere, New Zealand, they're taking the local wines Right. and putting local herbs and spices to change as we used to understand what vermouth was. How is it used? Well, traditionally vermouth was used in classic cocktails. So you would have it in a martini with a dry vermouth, um, you would have a Negroni or a Manhattan with a red vermouth. Yeah. Um, the rosé, I mean there's only probably four or five rosé vermouths in the world. But Regal Rogue, the whole offering and proposition of Regal Rogue mm -hmm. was about bringing people back into drinking vermouth. So have it over ice, have it long like a gin and tonic with tonic or ginger beer with the bold red, um, or have it in a low alcohol spritz or aperitif. And in Hong Kong, you've got such a big happy hour, you know, movement and culture. Yes. Um, you know, people are loving the spritz. It's fantastic to come into Hong Kong and be a part of that culture mm. and, and use um, vermouth or regal rogue instead of a spirit as a base ingredient for a spritz uh, or a twist on a gin and tonic. A twist on a gin and tonic. I yeah. like that. I like that. That sounds really cool. What is the difference between Bianco and Rosso? Well, traditionally, Bianco would use white wine and then maybe more floral or citrus herbs. Traditional Rosso does use white wine okay. and then more barks and spices. Regardless of the wine, mm -hmm. the aromatized comes from aromatics. The spices and are gin might call them botanicals, we call them aromatics. Same thing, but mm. just different application to the liquid. Um, for Regal Road, because we use clear glass, yeah. uh, if it's at, in the bar, like here, or at home, in the wrap, leave on the back shelf, leave it in the wrap, but the minute you open it, you need to store it in the fridge. For how long? How long is it good for? Well, like wine, so with wine you get about three days. Right. Because we fortified the wine, it stabilises the wine for longer, mm. and so you've got about two months in the fridge. But we. Um, 
We're one of the only brands, or the only brand in the world, to have a date square on the back. Ah. So when you open it, you can write when you opened it, so that you put remember. it in the fridge, yeah. and if you get home after two and a half months, because you just had a wild weekend, right? <laughs> <laughs> took you two and a half months to get yeah. home, um, then you can actually cook with the vermouth. You can cook with it? Yeah, so the white I use with fish and chicken, um, and the red, not so much with the rosé, but with the red with more dark meat. That's a really good thing to do, right? So it doesn't go to, go to waste. 